Since the introduction of the original montage in 2017, Yamaha has made changes to the way in which the system uses MIDI channels, culminating in the MIDI implementation for the Montage M. However, in making the most recent changes, Yamaha have introduced some major issues. In fact, I believe that some of the changes designed into Montage M are short-sighted and miss crucial use cases. To understand how we got to this point, we need to talk about the history of how the Montage family of synths has used MIDI channels. In 2017, when the Montage launched as a 16-part multi-timbral synthesizer, there was only one MIDI mode. Each part was allocated a MIDI channel, and that assignment was fixed, such that part 1 would always send and receive on MIDI channel 1, part 2 would use channel 2, right through to part 16 on channel 16. This design allowed a lot of flexibility, but as the Montage could only use 8 AWM elements per part, Several sounds with more complex programming were implemented as multi-part instruments, such as the CFX Concert Performance, which uses 17 elements spread across four performance parts. Therefore, in order to properly play the CFX Concert Performance over MIDI, it would be necessary to send the same MIDI data over channels 1, 2, 3 and 4 to address all four parts of the instrument. However, it's rare to find a MIDI controller that can do that, as most will broadcast on a single channel, making it all but impossible to play those multi-part instruments without some MIDI routing with a door. With firmware version 2, the Montage gained the ability to switch MIDI mode. You could use the original mode, which was named Multi, or switch to the new single MIDI mode, where all parts of a performance would send and receive on a single MIDI channel of your choice. Single mode made it very easy to play multi-part instruments like the CFX Concert in a doorless setup, but using single MIDI mode removed the ability to separately address other parts of the performance that might need to play notes other than those being sent to the primary instrument. As a remedy, firmware version 3 introduced hybrid MIDI mode, which combined elements of the multi and single modes. In hybrid mode, or when using Montage M, all performance parts with keyboard control enabled transmit and receive on a single MIDI channel of your choice, while parts that have keyboard control disabled use their own MIDI channel. So if you have a performance with the CFX concert and a pad, you could enable keyboard control for the four CFX parts and play them all with channel 1, or any other channel that you want to use, and then disable keyboard control for the pad part and have it send and receive on channel 5. This works pretty well, but throughout its life there was a constant stream of requests from montage owners asking Yamaha to allow them to change the MIDI channel allocated to each part rather than having the channel locked to the part number. With Montage M, Yamaha have finally granted that request. The Montage M does not have the ability to switch MIDI modes that the classic Montage had, and instead it uses a modified version of hybrid mode but the difference here is that those parts with their own MIDI channels can alter the channel they use, so it's now possible to have several of those parts occupy a single MIDI channel, something that wasn't possible with the classic montage. The original hybrid system would allow you to address multi-part instruments over a single MIDI channel by attaching keyboard control to all of its constituent parts, but if you had any other multi-part instruments in your performance, you'd be back to the problem that affected multi-mode, whereby you could not address those parts using a single MIDI channel. But as Montage M can attach multiple parts without keyboard control to the same MIDI channel, that's no longer a problem. And if that was the extent of the changes to the MIDI implementation for Montage M, I think everyone would be very happy. But it's not. To understand what's gone wrong, we need to dig deeper into the MIDI functionality of the Montage family. For transmission purposes, parts can enable the curiously named but absolutely brilliant Zone functionality, which is intended to allow Montage family synths to control other MIDI instruments. When Zone is enabled, it's possible to send program change messages to MIDI connected instruments, so that when a performance is loaded, those instruments can automatically load a pre-selected patch, making for a fully integrated sound selection experience with the Montage family synth loading not only its own sounds, but also those on the external instruments. Zone mode also allows parts to transmit those program changes and all other MIDI data on any MIDI channel, regardless of the part number. This also means that in hybrid mode, Parts with keyboard control enabled can break free of the global MIDI channel and broadcast their own MIDI data on a separate channel, 
We'll see why this is important later in the video. On the Classic Montage and Modi X, enabling Zone Mode is treated as extra functionality for the part to which it's attached, and there's an independent internal switch in the Zone settings which allows the user to decide whether or not to have the part continue to play the internal sound engines or not, so you can choose to layer an internal sound with an external sound using just one part. This is a really powerful feature, and it's one that I've used a lot in my own performances. Montage M has made extensive changes to the zone system, such that enabling the zone system for a part switches its mode to external. Parts set to external do not play the internal sound engines at all, so if you want to do that layering approach I just described, it's going to cost you another performance part to do so. This in itself is a major loss of valuable functionality, and a waste of one of the eight valuable parts that can have keyboard control enabled. Another significant change relates to arpeggios. On the Classic Montage and Modi X, there's a switch within the MIDI settings to enable ARP MIDI Out. This setting changes the MIDI output of all parts playing arpeggios, such that they will transmit the generated notes from the arpeggio rather than the notes that you actually play on the keyboard. This is a really great ability, because it allows you to use the amazing arpeggio capabilities of the montage to arpeggiate other hardware synths or virtual instruments. For Montage M, the ARP MIDI OUT setting has been removed, and instead, all parts set to external will transmit the output of any arpeggios they're playing, as if you'd enabled ARP MIDI OUT, while internal parts will send just the notes you play on the keyboard. In some ways, this is a good change, because it means that the ARP MIDI OUT setting is no longer global, but it's attached to individual parts. However, there is a major downside, and to illustrate it, I need to build the same performance on the Classic Montage and the Montage M. Let's start with the Classic Montage, which I've temporarily switched to use the DIN MIDI port rather than USB, so it can talk to my Waldorf Quantum, which is connected directly to the montage using a MIDI cable. I've loaded a performance with a pad, and I'm going to turn off any arpeggios attached to that sound. Next, I'm going to load this E harpsichord part, as we will be able to hear it clearly against the pad. I'll leave the harpsichord arpeggio in place and enable the master arpeggio switch. I want to layer this harpsichord with a sound from my quantum, so I'll need to have the arpeggiated notes transmitted over MIDI rather than whatever my fingers play, so in the MIDI settings I'll enable ARP MIDI OUT. However, as we are in hybrid MIDI mode, and both the pad and the harpsichord have keyboard control enabled, the montage won't separate the notes I'm playing from the arpeggiated notes being generated, and instead it will just transmit the MIDI from the first part with keyboard control. So I'm going to have to enable zone mode for the harpsichord part so that it can transmit on a separate MIDI channel from the pad. Now I can bring up the sound I want on the quantum and play my pad, the arpeggiated montage harpsichord, and the arpeggiated quantum sound all at the same time. Let's switch back to USB MIDI mode, turn off local control and open my door, which I've configured to send whatever is transmitted on MIDI channel 2 from the montage to the quantum. I'll record a little in the door, and we can see the notes I'm playing for the pad being recorded on the track listening to MIDI channel 1, and the arpeggiated notes being recorded onto the tracks listening to channel 2. Let's do the same on the Montage M, which I've switched over to DIN MIDI mode and connected to the Quantum with the same MIDI cable that I've moved from the Classic Montage. We'll load the same pad performance and add the E harpsichord, switching the arpeggios as before. As the Montage M works in a manner similar to hybrid mode, we'll need to switch the harpsichord part to external to have it output the arpeggiated notes and play the Quantum. Of course, because the harpsichord part is now set to external, Montage M will no longer play the internal sound engine, so already we're running into problems, and I'll need to duplicate that part and switch it back to internal in order to hear the sound from the harpsichord, so it's fortunate that I had empty parts in its performance to allow that. Now I can play the pad, the harpsichord and the quantum all together as I did on the classic montage. I want to record my performance in the door, so I'll switch back to USB MIDI mode and disable local control as before. I'll hit record and start playing. And as you can see, I'm only recording the arpeggiated notes coming in on channel 2, 
there's nothing being recorded on channel 1 at all. Which brings us to the final change to the MIDI operation of the Montage M, and one that is documented as having been implemented by design, namely that whenever any parts are set to external within a performance, the internal parts will continue to play, but will cease to transmit any MIDI at all. While this change is fine if you're working with directly connected synths, as I did just now over the MIDI cable, it makes absolutely no sense whatsoever in the context of working with a door, where I absolutely want to record both the arpeggiated notes and the notes I'm actually playing. It really feels as though the designers of the Montage M only really considered live performance and forgot all about the fact that users might actually want to record their work in a door. There is a workaround, but once again it's going to cost us another part of the performance. I have to create yet another part with keyboard control, turn off its arpeggio and set it to external in order to have it transmit the MIDI that should have been transmitted from my pad part. So here we are with a relatively simple performance that used only two parts on the classic montage, for which I need to use four parts to achieve exactly the same thing on the Montage M. And if that's not a step backwards, I don't know what is. There is an active discussion of these issues on the Yamaha Synth Ideascale site, and I've put links in the description for this video if you'd like to add your own comments in the hope that Yamaha will use a firmware update to restore the MIDI flexibility from the classic Montage and Modi X that's been lost with Montage M. I hope that this video has given you a deeper understanding of how MIDI is implemented in the Montage family of synths, and that you'll join me in lobbying Yamaha to bring back the flexibility and power that we once had with these instruments to the Montage M. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.